Peter wants to build tents on Mount Tabor and Jesus, so that Jesus, James, and John could bask in the glory. But Jesus says, get up! There is no rest for the blessed. Let's get going. The world awaits us down the mountain. And by the way, don't tell anyone about this mountaintop experience until I have suffered and died and been raised from the dead. You see, Jesus wants his followers to know that the mountaintop, as wonderful as it is, is not the gospel. The white, clo- the white clothes and bright lights are not the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus loves us enough to suffer and be killed and die for us amidst all the ugliness and pain that can sometimes be life. That's the gospel. So Peter, let's get back down into the world, into the thick of things, because the story's not over yet. God hasn't written the final chapter on Mount Tabor. And brothers and sisters, I hope that your attitude of following Jesus is that there is more than what you know right now. I hope that you are open to having God change the way that you look about things. The disciples who at one moment knew all the answers now find out that they don't really know much at all. But what they do know is this. They are to keep following Jesus. And isn't that really the same with us? Do you know all that God has in store for Star Mount Presbyterian Church? Do you know everything that God has in store for you? Do you have all your questions of faith answered? And are you just basking in the glow of it all? Well, then you're missing the adventure of following Jesus to the cross. Why is it that Christians have been fixated with this story from the beginning? Why do we celebrate the transfiguration of the Lord every year? Why did we remember that moment in his life that Jesus walks out of glory on the mountaintop back down to love and be with disciples and neighbors and all God's people? Because as we walk through this story, we learn more about Jesus. He becomes more wonderful and our lives become more purposeful. And because we find year after year when we follow Jesus, we go places that we never thought we'd go. We do things that we never thought we could do. We endure situations that seemed unendurable. And we find ourselves connecting and loving and caring for people that we had long since given up on. I'd like to close by sharing this story from the great preacher Fred Craddock. He is an awesome storyteller. And he simply says this. I was in graduate school at Vanderbilt and I'd leave my family, my wife, kids and go down to a little diner to study for all those awful comprehensive exams. I'd go to this little all night diner that was missing the usual booths. Instead, it only had those little padded stools so that you could sit at the bar. I'd order grilled cheese and a cup of coffee and I'd sit there until 11 p.m. And the coffee would get filled up again and again. After a while, I didn't need to order. The waitress would see me coming and the short order cook would put my grilled cheese on even as the waitress would greet me with a cup of coffee. I became one of the men of the night sitting there hovering over my cup of coffee, thinking about my own questions and the New Testament oral exams. And then I noticed a man who was there when I came in. I had had my grilled cheese sandwich and a refill on my coffee, and this man had yet to be waited on. Then the short order cook asked him, what do you want? The old gray-haired black man said something, and the short order cook scooped up a little dark patty off the back of the grill, threw it on a piece of bread without any condiments, put it on a napkin, and handed it to him. The man paid for his food and took it outside to the curb where he sat and ate next to the outdoor garbage can. And it was seasoned with the salt and pepper of the 18 wheelers passing by. I didn't say anything. I didn't reprimand, protest, or witness, or try to correct the cook. I didn't go outside and sit beside the man on the curb. I didn't do anything. I was too busy thinking about the questions coming up on the New Testament exam. I left the place. I walked up the hill to my family's apartment. And all of a sudden, I heard a cock. Brothers and sisters, we need to be so immersed in the story of Jesus that it changes the way.
that we look at things. That it changes the way that we look at people. That it changes the way that we look at everything that happens around us. We need to be so wrapped up in following Christ who came off the mountain, out of heaven, to earth, to Jerusalem for us that we hear and see what others don't hear and see. Because Christ is in the midst of everything. Don't be satisfied with having Jesus just answer our questions. But Lord, what are the questions we've never thought of? The people that we've never thought of. The situations that we have never thought of that you want me to see. Maybe even in my own church, my own marriage, my own family, my own workplace, my own school. Lord, open my eyes. Be transfigured before me. And then let me follow. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, one of the ways that the church has been following throughout all these centuries is by keeping the faith and by sharing that faith with all. And so it is this morning that I invite you to join with the pilgrim band that has been confessing what we believe to be true about God using the Apostles' Creed for nearly 2,000 years now. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed printed in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 